At your deathbed, you've lived a film. We don't come to Earth for a long time. We come for a very short amount of time. For most people in the sidelines was the second film. The hell with it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna quit my job, I'm gonna become a writer. For whatever reason, and whether you didn't have the courage or the curiosity or the confidence, it never came to be. We finished training the horses and we started the journey. And the purpose and the reason we do the do. Must is just who you are. This is your life. Seize the day. Is to narrow the distance between those two films. All right, well, I thought I was ready, and now I'm breaking down after that. That's, that was too much. That was so nice, so thank you very much. Um, all right, well, my name is Colin Delahanty, and I'm a photographer. Um, I didn't really know that about myself uh, maybe two, three years ago. Um, I was in school. Um, I, was, um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life. I, I had a lot of pressure from my parents to, um, like all of us, to be successful and to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And, um, and I, I really didn't know. And I, I wasn't doing great in school either. And um, um, I picked up climbing in college. Um, some of my friends, they, uh, they noticed that I was kind of crazy and I liked doing crazy things. And uh, I was like, you know, going out into the courtyard at school. and like doing backflips for no reason. Just like, we were like, that guy probably would like climbing. Like, uh, we should get him climbing. So um, they brought me to a climbing gym in San Jose. I was going to school at Santa Clara at the time. And within a couple days, I was going to the climbing gym like four or five times a, uh, a, uh, a, a week. And uh, I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit in the story. So I'm going to pull through to this first slide. Um, <laughs> Um, that's just a little bit of background of who I am and like, you know, kind of where I started and just um, building off of what my brother said um, that basically uh, when, I, when I do something, I, I kind of um, get obsessed and I go crazy with it and uh, I, I have a hard time listening to anyone. And, um, but I, at the same time, I, I doubt myself a lot and uh, this story about what I did with Project Yosemite kind of um, captures all of that and also talks about something that I learned about, um, something I learned about myself that I didn't really know existed until just three years ago. And uh, kind of also has something to do with the times that we're in right now and uh, how technology has changed a lot and uh, how our voices can, can reach a lot further. Um, so I'm just going to say that, yeah, first slide, I'm, I'm a photographer and I was doing photography for a long time, but this is more about time-lapse photography, um, something that I, I learned about through, um, through the person I'm going to introduce next, as well as um, um, a really inspiring film that we probably have all seen. Uh, has anyone um, an idea of what time-lapse is? If you don't know what time-lapse is, just raise your hand and I'll give a little ex explanation of that. Um, it seems like I think all of us understand what time-lapse is, so <laughs> I'm going to go on to talking about Sheldon. Um, and I'm going to go more into the story about how I met Sheldon uh, later on. But Sheldon's a photographer as well. And uh, when, I, when I met him, um, it was on the internet. And uh, we just, the two of us have very similar personalities. Um, and we have our own uh, strengths. And so that's why we partnered. We, we both really complement each other really well. And uh, he couldn't be here today. But uh, this is a picture of him. He's a handsome guy, and uh, he loves cameras, too. So the two of us started this project. It's called Project Yosemite. Very simple title. Um, we, uh, that's Half Dome, a silhouette of Half Dome. It's an aperture for photography of Half Dome. So, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Sheldon made that. And uh, so we, uh, we, we started this project. Um, to document Yosemite National Park in time-lapse. And we chose time-lapse because usually when you're taking a still photo of a landscape, there's, there's not a lot going on. There's just a lot of landscape, and it's really far away, and there's not much moving other than the clouds. But if you do use time-lapse, you can speed that up, and you can capture something over a long period of time. So you can see the clouds moving, and the sun setting, or the moon rising, or the Milky Way casting across the sky. and it's. It's all really amazing, especially when you can see it in time lapse. Because when you're watching it, it's it's hard to imagine where you know you'll start and finish when the when the thing's over. So 
the, the whole inspiration for, for me pursuing time lapse and photography and just being wowed by the hobby um, started with the series Planet Earth. And just raise your hand if you've seen Planet Earth, because I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of hands in here. And if you don't know what Planet Earth is, it's a BBC series that was uh, amazing. It, it, uh, it was the first document, nature documentary that I've seen, and there's, a, there's many before that, but uh, it's nothing new. But Planet Earth just kind of took it to the next level, and there was, there were so many um, uh, amazing places they captured, and it, 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 it did its best to capture all the different uh, ecosystems and, and uh, places on our planet and, um, and in, in one uh, series, and you know, mountains or woodlands or underwaters, rivers and freshwater. And, and, and I, was, I was really blown away by that. And um, when, I, uh, when, I, when I watched it, um, I didn't just watch it once. And I, I was in college at the time. So it, in college, we'd have like planet Earth parties. <laughs> and we would just, we would hang out and like order pizza and watch planet Earth. And we would do it until the late night. And it was like, you know, uh, other other things that were typical of college happened, but in my college, I, I, I climbed and I watched Planet Earth a lot of the time too, and uh, and I and I would just have these on my computer. I would be studying, and I, instead of studying, I would watch Planet Earth because I was just like, wow, I'd, I'd rather be doing that right now. So that kind of stuck in my head for a long time because Planet Earth came out, I think, in 2004, 2006, like you know, way before I started this project, and. Uh, and uh, with, along with the, the footage that they capture in, in planet Earth, they also, um, uh, this is just me with a picture of Spider-Man saying cameras are amazing. They, they showed, uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> they, uh, they showed you how, how you, uh, how they captured all this footage. And there was one particular thing that really just blew my mind. I was like, wow, that is a lot of work. And it's, it's amazing. I can't believe they had, they captured an entire growth season and in one, sh one 20 second clip. And they spent so much time setting up this one shot to make it perfect to really help people understand, see something that they would never see. And, and this is kind of the setup. It's, uh, it was in the woodland section of the Planet Earth series. And um, in this first clip, you show the outdoor, they show the outdoor scene. And then they show the indoor scene uh, in the studio on the right. And, and the way that those two are related is they shot the outdoor, a time lapse in the outdoors and had the camera move over this area, over a long uh, a stretch of land. And, uh, and then they did the same movement indoors. And they used uh, blue screens and they built out like fake logs and fake trees and all the, all, they built out, built out the environment to, to, so that they could layer the two shots. And uh, when you watched it, they, um, it, it showed all these plants on the right side growing. These, these plants grew through an entire season. You saw them flower and then and deflower. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and then they, they layer the two shots. And, and I wish I could show the video, but I, 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 don't, I don't have that video. But it's, uh, it's just amazing. And, and uh, the whole point of that, me telling you that story about that one shot is I, I was blown away. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know that you could do things like that. I didn't know that that's how. Um, that's how time lapse and photography uh, worked, and 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 that, that, that basically like photography is magic. Before I um, before I saw how it was done, I just I, it didn't really cross my mind that that's how you did it, and there was so much work behind it. And I really liked that. I liked that, that I liked that there could be something so challenging about ph photography and cameras and, and moving them that you could there was like an endless there there you know if you could think up an an idea like you could probably capture it with a camera. And uh, that, that excited me so much. I, I just wanted to do that. And then I went online and looked at cameras and uh, how much they cost. And, and I realized that I was in no position to buy a camera to do anything like that or set up, a, you know, I'm, not, I'm no engineer. I, I can't set up uh, a moving shot like that. But uh, soon I could. And that's because of the way that uh, things changed in 2009 and 2010. With with uh, full frame cameras uh, and on and, and built in video to still cameras uh, became a thing it, and also um, full frame cameras were always around but they just became a lot cheaper the 5D Mark II um, was a, a camera that really turned every 
still photographer, all of a sudden into a videographer because the 5D Mark II came with video capabilities. And um, like other people, I suddenly wanted to start making videos. And I suddenly wanted to like spend $2,000 on this camera to do who knows what. And like my brother said, I didn't know how to use the camera when I first got it. I had a, pre a DSLR, be DSLR before that, but I was taking really crappy photos. And I had no reason to buy a 5D Mark II and spend all my money. And my parents were definitely wondering you know, where my bank account went. And uh, so another thing was uh, the um, 1080p uh, online video became uh, a possibility. YouTube introduced 1080p online video in 2010, as well as Vimeo. And all of a sudden, videos that you're watching online started to look a lot better. And I started watching these videos, and, I st and people were starting to put more and more great content, content outline, online. And that really influenced me. It made me want to make my uh, own video. And um, so I started doing that. I started going on climbing trips and um, started documenting all of, um, my experiences. And, and, and actually, I started to see a shift from doing the climbing to documenting the climbing. I, would go, I went on a trip to the Red River Gorge in Kentucky, and I made a video for every crag that we went to. And I don't know why I spent so much time doing this. And now the, I look back on the videos, and they, they were not great. They, they were, but people liked them. And, and that's the thing that really made me start to see something in myself that I didn't really know. I, I, you know, you, get this, you put a video out online, and someone says, great job. And you're like, oh, I guess that people like that. And uh, so I, I started to get some feedback and, I, uh, and, 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 and realized that um, I should keep doing this. And I have a picture of all my maps and books and stuff like that. Um, I took it right before I came to do because these are um, things that really um, kind of uh, where my ideas manifested is in maps and guidebooks. I really wanted to, I, I, I was amazed by how much work and, and uh, detail went into explaining how to get to a crag or get, get to a mountain um, and just the design behind it. Um, I wanted to create something similar to that so people could see what I was taking pictures of and then want it because when I see a picture of a place I want to go there and um, that's really kind of where I start that's where my my uh, my ideas come from is someone else's work and uh, so I wanted to create uh, something I didn't know where I started I made a video in Kentucky and I made a video in Bishop and in, in the buttermilks and all these other climbing places that are really popular um, and I wanted to show people I wanted to get, make a, a, a visual guide of uh, what it's like to climb and what the boulders look like and, and, and show some scale so people could be, get excited and want to go do that themselves. So um, that, I kind of missed that slide. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, I basically just talked about those two things. Another thing that um, happened um, technology-wise is uh, this guy, uh, Jay, started making started a company called Dynamic Perception, and Dynamic Perception is a uh, company that makes slider dollies. So like I was saying in that earlier example of Planet Earth, that shot that where the camera moved, all of a sudden that sort of equipment was within the under a thousand dollar price range, and still that's not really within my price range, and I didn't really know whether I wanted to buy something like that, but this guy, who I introduced earlier. Um, this, is a, this is the um, comment section of, on Vimeo for a video he made, um, Cottonwood Pass to uh, Mount Whitney. He did that hike, and he brought this insane rig that I was just talking about, and he strapped it to his backpack. <laughs> and it adds probably another 10 or 15 pounds, and he told me that that, that hike was miserable, but he made this video, and he captured uh, in time-lapse, motion time-lapse, um, all these places he went to, um, and no one was really doing that. No one was, um, no one saw a point in carrying uh, all that weight to capture something in time lapse just so you can move the camera. And and for some reason, him and I had this 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 same crazy idea. We both wanted to like strap a huge piece of metal to the side of our bag and go out there and shoot stuff and see what you could get. And uh, uh, we did we did that together, and uh, we did it in Yosemite. Um, and um, actually, we met each other through that. Uh, I missed that, <laughs> that part of the story. Uh, when I saw that video, I contacted him. And we went back and forth and talked about how much uh, 
we wanted to do something like that. And he told me that he had permits to go to the top of Half Dome in a month. And so he invited me and some other people, but it ended up just being the two of us. And we went up to the top of Half Dome, and you can see that's uh, our setup right there. That's the camera taking a time lapse and slowly pulling away. And, um, and, and we both um, were up on top of Half Dome from just be before, just before sunset all the way through sunrise and we stayed up all night here's a different location this is kind of an idea of what we're doing we're, we're shooting sunset and then we're getting you know eating a cliff bar or whatever and then blowing up our uh, air mattress and sleeping on like a little tiny area uh, and uh, and then waking up three hours later and making sure this camera's still going and nothing fell over our camera lens didn't break or something like that and then, uh, then going, setting up another shot, and then going back to bed and waking up, and, uh, and I'm kind of running out of time here. <laughs> um, and uh, and so the the thing is, when we when we were shooting all of this, we kind of saw that we had sh we had shot something amazing, and we were so excited, like being up there. We kept telling each other, like what. It, how amazing it was to be on top of Half Dome in the middle of the night with the Milky Way going overhead, and and to me it was like being on the moon. I um, I felt like I was on a different planet. I felt like I was experiencing something, experiencing something that no one had ever experienced before. And uh, just the isolation and being out there, it was, I, I and, and looking at a landscape, um, whether I was on top of Half Dome or on top of Echo Peaks or in the meadows in Yosemite Valley, like just spending so much time in one area, like you start to uh, develop a different relationship with um, the friendship with the place that you're shooting and uh, and just all this excitement that I was having, I, 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 when I do this and I get a really good shot or when I'm just hanging out in a place that I, that I really like, I, I have this feeling that is like the, the, most, the most happy I've ever been. And, I'm, and I don't know why I'm there and I don't know what I'm shooting, like how it's all gonna come together, um, but I just, I know it's right. And I, I, that's where I, I just kind of do things and, I, and I, if I have this feeling, I, I can't let go of it. But, I was also super doubtful about whether or not I was actually going to uh, pull off, like what would actually all this footage come together to be in the video? Would people like it? Would it, would it be all worth all my time? Should I, I spent, you know, over a year and a half shooting in Yosemite on random trips that we, you know, I made so many trips to Yosemite and, um, and a lot of times I had a hard time uh, understanding what it all meant and why was I doing it, but I just kept doing it. and. Seeing it, seeing it get out there and put online, and and and, and just watching it, um, you know, finally in a full piece like I'm about to show you, um, made me realize that um, this is something I want to do for as long as I can, and I want to continue to get better and better. And, and I still don't think I did a really good job with this one. I like it, but I think I could continue to develop this idea into something that I would. Uh, be more proud of and, 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 and you know have more purpose and I don't just want to go out there and take pretty pictures I want to continue to 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 continue doing what I'm doing and uh, I'm just going to show you the video now because it will because I've been talking for too long and uh, this is uh, this is somebody HD too.
That was... <laughs> Thank you. So that's, that was uh, my, my version of Planet Earth for Yosemite and uh, <laughs> it'll get better and uh, I hope and um, I hope I can keep doing stuff like that. Um, I get emails from people all the time saying that they want to, they're inspired by what I did and they, they're like, here, this is what I did in my trip to Tahoe or whatever and, and they're like, what do you think I should buy and what, what kind of gear do you think I, sh I need and so hopefully, you know, when I watched Planet Earth, I was like, why don't more people make the, like, stuff like this? Why do we have like Game of Thrones and all these like terrible TV shows that, <laughs> that we probably could, you know, live without and why don't people just go out and make stuff like that more often and so hopefully that will inspire some person to to follow what i'm doing and do it better so thank you